Brothers and sisters, we have a plan. This is back with James. How's it going, my fellows? Hope you're doing well. Well, the end of the law was grace. And for 2,000 years, we had a grace period. That's because it's a two days grace, guys. Two days grace. Certainly, the Lord said to Moses, sanctify the people for two days, because on the third day, the Lord is going to come down on the holy mountain. Yes, on the third day, the Lord will certainly come down upon two mountains, because the mountain of olives shall be split in two. There are two witnesses. See, the end of grace is the law. Yeah, uh, the Lord came and he abolished the curse of the law. The curse of the law is certainly death, sin and death. Because the law, it basically establishes sin. It reveals to us that we have need of a savior. But certainly the Savior did not succumb to sin, nor did he succumb to death. The Lord, he walked the perfect path. And now, so shall we, or we shall die. Certainly, according to the word, we shall die. Because the cursed thing, this is what Achan took up. They grabbed Achan, and they took all of Achan's family, and they stoned them with stones, and they burned them with fire, so it shall be with those who will not repent. The grace has come to an end. Certainly the Lord said this. He said, when you see leaves on the tree, certainly you should know that summer is near. The leaves have ap appeared, my fellows. The new book of the Bible. The leaves have appeared, so summer is near. And the same as before. There was a flood, an everlasting flood, that killed the world, and there were only a few survivors, those who entered into the ark of salvation. This time it shall be a fiery furnace, it shall be a very hot summer. And whoever has not entered into the Christ, who is the ark of the covenant, who is the ark of salvation, who is the Lord your righteousness, whoever has not entered into the truth, the only way, the only life, Death remains for them. So repent and give God glory. But anyway, enough with my musing. Let me get to the point. Have you ever kind of wondered how is this going to go down? How is all this going to happen? Of course, uh, you probably saw the rapture video. Everyone loves the rapture. I should, I should name this one the rapture. <laughs> and look how many views I'll get. The rapture, the rapture, the rapture. You want to know something that's funny about the rapture? It's a very little flock. Very few will go. The rest of us will be left. Seven years of tribulation are upon the rest of us. Why? Because we love God and we loved his name, but we did not love him enough. Shall the, shall the Lord take you to the heavenly court? Will you praise in the heavenly court or will you seek your own praise? Look at them in the churches. They are disgusting in the churches. I'm going to get to the churches in a moment. But the ones who are not taken in the rapture, they are not taken because they were not ready to be taken. Plain and simple. And it's more than a few. You must be perfect as the Lord is perfect. You must be holy as the Lord is holy. There are holy people in the earth. They are little children, little babies. They have not yet lost their innocence. And there are those that are holy because they have repented. Living a life of repentance. Certainly, King David, was he holy? When he desired the wife of Uriah, even putting Uriah to death, Uriah for some, even taking Bathsheba for his own wife in fornication and adultery, even before God, even as the king of Israel, was King David holy? No. King David certainly became holy when he, uh, when he wrote the Psalms, when he became a prophet. And why did King David become a prophet? Because King David knew the wrath of the Lord. Certainly because of his actions, the Lord requited King David. He recompensed King David. And King David knew the judgment of God. And he became a prophet then. He became um, 
a holy man after that point. And all his thoughts were about God because he had seen for himself that the Lord cannot abide sin. But those who dwell in the churches, they need convincing. And those who dwell in the mosques need convincing. And those who dwell in the New Age temples of Buddha and uh, and all the many gods of the pantheon, all the temples, they need convincing. They, they're not sure about the Holy One of Israel. And even the Jews, yes, the Jews, are they not in need of convincing? Can you remember what happened when Absalom caused King David to go into uh, exile? Do you remember how all the tribes gathered around the king once the Lord has established the king once again and Absalom was dead? What did the Lord King David say? Didn't the King David say to his own brethren, to the tribe of Judah, he said to them, why are you the last ones to bring home the king? So it will be with the Jews. I'll get to the Jews last of all. This is what the 144,000 are going to be sent out to do after the rapture. After everyone has been slapped in the face by God and they're, now they're awake and now they're paying attention and now their ears are open, they will no longer laugh at these words. They will no longer laugh at the prophets, but they will fear them. The 144,000 are going to show up all of a sudden just like just like a, a growth of the night, just like weeds where they will spring up. Weeds, I say, so that you might understand the illustration. They're going to come out of nowhere. You're going to wonder, how is it these have shown up? The same things that they said of the Lord Christ Jesus, so they will say about the, the 144,000. And what shall they do? First and foremost... Read it in your Bibles. It's in Ezekiel, I believe it's chapter 9. Okay, when uh, the man with the, 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 uh, the man with the writing table or the secretary's inkhorn. Forgive me, that's from the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Uh, the man with the inkhorn, okay. Uh, he's got the linen cloth and there are six that follow him. He will go through the land and mark the foreheads. And those six men with the destroying uh, objects in their hands, they will certainly follow behind him. And whoever does not have the mark, they shall be destroyed. They shall be pierced through. They shall be cut to the heart. And we shall not spare. We shall not spare old man and young child. And by young child, of course, I don't mean any innocent babies. Certainly, didn't you read about the 42 children that were eaten up by the two she-bears because they cursed uh, Elisha? God cannot abide sin. If they be little perverts, they're not going in the rapture. They will be convinced by the 144,000. But anyways, <clears throat> so it is. Just as the Lord said, start at the sanctuary of God and go forth and, and go from there. So the 144,000 will be sent to the lost sheep of Israel. And there are many here in the west, but there are many in the south and the north as well as the east. The 144,000 shall go and we shall have peace on our lips. We, we shall say rejoice for God has come. We shall say, repent, for the day of the Lord is near. We shall say, there is, a one, there is one that is coming after us whose sandals we are not fit to untie. Yes, we shall prepare the people because they need extra grace. They need extra grace, even though they had 2,000 plus years to get ready. They need extra grace. Otherwise, no flesh should be saved. So for three and a half years, we shall fly the woman into the wilderness. Now, why should the woman be flown into the wilderness? Where is the woman? Isn't she inside watching television? Being haughty? Isn't her name Vashti? Because the king commands, but she does not come. She is very haughty, is she not? The woman shall be flown into the wilderness. She shall altogether be full of sorrow because her little child will be gone. There will not be one house that did not feel the rapture for themselves. So she'll be all ears. She'll be very confused because at the same time, there should be war all around. There should be fright all around, calamity all around. 
in this climate shall the 144,000 go forth to every single church, to every single mosque, to every single temple who claims to be holy. Every eye shall see the, the voice of the Lord. Every eye shall hear the command of God. Repent, for the kingdom of God has drawn near. This is the, uh, the preaching. This is the preaching work that the Jehovah's Witnesses claim that they're doing. Certainly not. And who listens to their preaching work? And even the ones that listen, are they not fit for a threshing? Are they not fit for refinement in the day? So the Lord shall send the 144,000, each one to the, the house of God, quote unquote, a temple or a mosque or a church. And we shall knock on the door and we shall say, look, we have the peace of God with us. If they shall listen, our peace will enter in and it shall baptize all in the house. But if they should turn us away, we shall destroy their temples. And I tell you the truth, even the Lord has spoken to this in the new book of the Bible. Let me plug it again. Even the Lord has said, there shall be no house left standing. Every single church shall be obliterated. Let me make an illustration. The, uh, the people in the church, they are like the grain, okay? And, uh, the, uh, the farmer, he has silos and silos of grain, and he is very greedy. So instead of feeding the needy, and instead of caring for those that needed it, he grew very fat, and he grew very rich. And he built bigger silos, always with the bigger and better church, always with this huge number. Look at the Catholic church. Oh, I'll get to them in a minute. But these big, huge silos, you see... Now, what should you do with the grain? Should you store the grain? Certainly the farmer that has enough grain to store is rich. But the poor farmer, does he have, does he have time to store grain? Or does the poor farmer take what he, have, he would have in storage and sow it in the earth? Certainly the farmer must sow the seed. Otherwise, maybe next winter he won't have anything to eat. But not the rich farmer. The rich farmer grows fat. He has enough to plant and he has enough to store forever and ever. So are the churches. The churches are like the silos of grain. And the Lord has said, now is the time to plant my grain. Now is the time for them to walk on the waters. Yes, we must go to the silos and we must destroy the silos. We must tear down the silos. And all of God's people shall go into the world. And who will be waiting for them? Certainly Satan stands in front of the woman, seeking to devour her child. And when the child is taken up to the throne of heaven, so he also goes and seeks to do war and to devour the, rem the remnant, those remaining of her seed. This is uh, Revelation, I believe, chapter 9. Yep, chapter 9. The ones who remain of the woman's seed are the ones who got left behind. Now, it's sink or swim for those that got left behind. Either they're going to make it or not. E either they're going to become brave or they're going to become cowards and take the mark of the beast. The two wings of the great eagle, these are the two witnesses in number 144,000. These are the whip that the Lord will crack. They will go to every single house. Do you remember? The Lord entered into the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Father, and said, Look, you have made my Father's house a place of merchandise. Are the churches places of merchandise? They certainly are. Yes, they are. So the Lord will go. In wrath, he shall turn the tables. In wrath, he shall crack his whip. And he will scatter them, and they shall scatter. But every single one who remains, and everyone who does not forsake the Lord, they shall also love the message of the 144,000. They shall go into the wilderness and be fed for a time, times, and half a time. 1,260 days. This is the extension of the grace period. And the 144,000, they shall go to every single church. So, if you're not convinced, just wait. 
Go to your church and ask your pastor about all these things that are coming upon the earth and what you shall do. Your pastor does not know. Perhaps, you know, maybe he does know. But certainly if he knows what's going on, he is not one of those pastors that are building bigger and better churches, always filling his pockets with profits. He's probably a prophet himself. Okay? But go to church and wait and pray. Fast and pray. Because the 144,000, they will certainly knock on your door. And they will say, peace be unto you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up upon you. And may he give you peace. And they will come with many miracles and many signs. And as soon as the 144,000 go forth, so shall the armies of Satan go forth. But woe to the armies of Satan. What does it say about the two witnesses? Doesn't it say that they breathe fire out of their mouths? What happened to the chief and his 50 and the chief and his 50? The third chief and the third 50, they surely repented before Elijah. They didn't approach Elijah. Perhaps the fire might be called down on their foreheads and they should end up like the first 102. So very soon the whole world will learn to hate the 144,000. What does it say about the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11? Doesn't it say that every tribe, tongue, and nation, every church, temple, and mosque, yes, the, the storehouses of grain, they will be shattered. The grain, they shall go out and either sink or swim. They must walk on water. They must be planted in the world. They must be planted in the wilderness, and they shall make very quick growth. Very quick growth. They shall grow in maturity in the name of the Lord, Yahshua. They shall learn the truth for themselves, and they will even able be, be able to do miracles themselves. And they have to do miracles themselves because at the end of the 1260 days, after we have destroyed every church and temple and mosque, there will be one more place that we have to go. And that will be Israel. Yes, we shall end up in Jerusalem. We shall even go to Jerusalem to destroy Jerusalem. And what shall happen to the 144,000 when they go to Jerusalem? The same thing that always happens when the prophets approach Jerusalem. Certainly we shall die. <laughs> Thank you.